right, ladies and gentlemen, man, I think we've been pre-gaming for like over an hour now getting to this recording. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. it's been good. It's been good. Just catching yeah. up on, on fun. old times, fun times. And yeah. we actually started going down the old memory bank, our old memory lane of um, back when... Yeah. That, that rabbit hole. That it's, rabbit it's hole. It's dangerous. I mean, it some would dangerous. call it a cesspool, depending from where um, you see the stories fair. that we know, yeah. Um, there's a reason why there's a gate around the place where we came from, but um, oh wow, yeah. Now people are gonna be like, "What fuck, penitentiary?" I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. These are these are these are the high school memories of a of a school that yes. now it seems to but it, now it looks like, like a fucking penitentiary and shit. It looks all gated up and it looks like a jail. Up. It looks like Arkham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> our old high school looks like Arkham now from a point of view. But we started talking about shit like that because we like to go down oh my old memories. And um, we were talking about back in the days, man, we used to do a lot of stupid shit that at the time to us didn't seem like a very big deal because it just wasn't at so that now, time. So now, again, and, and it, as we yeah. say that, it was always a big deal, but it's still funny to say. <laughs> it, just, um, it didn't take, register take as well. everybody. No, it did not. It really and I feel didn't. like that's the difference. Mm. But here is the the cultural difference literally between what is now 10 years, correct? Over 10 years. Over. It might so be we're 12. talking all of high school. We're talking all of high school. Oh, well, no. So well, so we graduated 10 years ago. We graduated 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So some of these stories are over 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And my they've, God, of that! Can you believe that like we're at wine. that point, though? Oh, they have. Oh yeah. Can oh, you yeah. believe oh, that we're at that decade? point of saying, "Yeah, that's fucked up." It's nuts. I don't like it's that. Nuts. It's one of those things where it's like it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it honestly it was. And like it I said, was, like it was a lifetime ago. Yeah, and even the time then was drastically different to the time we live in now i mean there's still a lot of stupid shit but it wasn't all very obviously social media wasn't that big yeah we we were it was very different kids (laughs) everything everything most everything was very fucking different but it was a time where it's just social media was probably just about to abrupt to what it is now like it was barely in the midst of becoming the the chaotic juggernaut that we see nowadays so it was one of those things where we weren't really affected by social media like this generation is because that's really sums up a lot of people's decision nowadays to us we were still kind of living in that time where we were still kind of in our own minds making our own mindset without other words or things in front of us to make decisions for us or to tell us what's right or wrong so a lot of things that we went through back in those days again they were certain big things now that we talk about it but at that time we just didn't see it that way if one of the stories that we had brought up is is one until this day that I mentioned. I can't, every... help, I can't help but smile <laughs> because I know the story that we're bringing up. It's, it's it's a motherfucker to bring up, but it's one of those stories where it's like it is. it's something that you see in America now almost every fucking month or week, and it's a sad thing that happens. Um, and it's something that could have fucking happened to us, and it's a shitty thing to bring up. Very but true. There was a situation where we we had a friend who was um obviously somebody that a lot of people were like i don't want to say afraid but they knew he had kind of connections you know and that's the way he presented himself to the school and he didn't last long let me tell you that he was not in this school for very long i would say probably just a barely few months and those few months it definitely made an impact but um there was another crazy enough right there which is crazy (sighs) enough right there side note yeah that so much happened within a few months that as a kid, yeah, it didn't register with us as it mm-hmm. does now. As a, it pains me to say, but as a fucking adult, mm-hmm. it doesn't register with me. the The amount of stuff that happened in no. a short amount of time, in which all we were supposed to be doing was fucking learning things at school, pretty much, and yeah. instead. We did the complete opposite. <laughs> and it was, we had our own like high school sitcom, except no one was filming. It was this the was high the, school version of the OC. <laughs> it was the it. actual OC. Yeah, that's without, that, that's what without that's without school, the glamour. Without the glamour and the music and all that stuff. But it was one of those things where like it was a running joke also that we had. I don't know if you remember this, but it was a running joke that we always fucking said that we wouldn't go out looking for this shit. It would just always fucking find a way. We to just us. happened to be in the worst place at 
always the fucking the right wrong. time. Well, yeah, I guess depending on what side you're on. At that but time, yeah. it seemed like the right time, but now, fucking almost a decade later, it was one of those things where it's like, holy shit, well, that actually happened. And we were kind of just so we brushed it off like nothing. We carried on with our lives like it was just another we're kids, another day in, in the beautiful city. I just of, thought it was fine of LP, yeah. And it was just one of those things. Oh yeah, that's, that's far a week ago. Yeah, that's the one of those things where it just didn't register. Um, but in this story, no. so this kid, our friend, because he was a cool dude, I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Obviously. He had his issues in the struggle. Good man. Good Good dude. He was a really cool, chill guy to be a friend of. And a lot of people in around the school either were like afraid of this guy or they just knew that this guy was connected in certain aspects of outside of the school grounds. Um, And there was another person that, and this is crazy, I knew this other person since elementary school. So this is why it's kind of wild to me too. It's going back. That's, yeah, that's, I, I know this a, kid for a hot minute. And he, for whatever, and, and as, we, as we sit there real quick, yeah. as we sit yeah. there, because, okay, you knew this guy since elementary school. Yeah. I I remember knowing people, obviously, same thing, since mm-hmm. elementary school through junior high into high school. Mm-hmm. It's so funny as a side note kind of thing. Because I know, again, I know the same guy. I know mm-hmm. the whole story. But at this point, before I continue, um, tell me, were you and him very close at this time? No, not at all. I knew him in passing mostly. You know what I mean? Like okay. I knew he was cool with people that I was cool with. And I knew him in passing where I didn't have a problem with him. Never had a problem with me. Always seemed mm-hmm. to me from the outside looking in. He always looked like a pretty chill kid. Just like whatever, you know, like I never really saw him get into any trouble. If anything, maybe the first side was he was always very quiet in elementary yeah. school. So it was kind of just like, who gives a fuck? You know, like nobody bothers him. He doesn't bother us. What does it matter to us? Um, but for some fucking reason, like he changed dramatically, dude, from elementary to junior high yeah like something happened and i know what happened he started hanging out with sort of the wrong crowd because that's how it started happens Happens. um and it kind of progressed into high school because in junior high it was already you see the signs high school kicks in and all of a sudden this dude's like a full-on trying to be a gangbanger trying to be in that situation even though he didn't fit the i would say criteria at the time or still even in the now um and one fucking day, he just comes up to me and and our former friend, which we have not seen since this all shit happened. Again, this is probably 13 is over, years ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, over 13 yeah. years. We wish yeah. him the best of luck. Yeah. You know, I, never heard from him again. Never had any information I, I whatsoever. I, I know oh, people man. have you, always... You know me. Yeah, people you know, have always you, brought him up to me acting like I would know. Yes. There was no yeah. connection. Yeah, Same. there was... Knew nothing. You didn't know where he lived. Didn't have a number, email. There was nothing. This guy, this literally, this kid just disappeared. And we'll get to that. And we're wondering. Obviously, we're not saying names for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't. I I I think the world of him. I don't remember his last name. Me neither. It was always a first name basis. It was. It was enough. It was that. It was like share. We just (laughs) we you need. He was our seal. He was our seal. <laughs> our seal. He was he was our kiss by a rose. And <laughs> and my that God. and the story I'm getting to in the conclusion, you could probably play that song when the transaction. Oh my happened. god. I'll get into it. I know that, I'm being very vague. I know I'm being very vague, but it's like we'll can get, we get to it. Can we uh can we message seal or seal's management and ask if we could just have 20 seconds of, of the of song just, to play of the in chorus. between? Just to play in the best case scenario. In the best, if there's a dramatization of this scene, that oh, song man. would have to play in the background of it. But oh. so this kid, and I know I'm, I'm again, it's hard without mentioning names, but our friend, obvious reasons, guys, was obviously connected. This other kid that I knew, elementary school, apparently thought he was involved in some kind of disturbance or drama, and he came to us one day, mind you, lunchtime, middle of the fucking day. A group of us we used to hang out together. We're all hanging up there. He comes up to us and casually. And here's the thing. We react to casually too, because to us, it wasn't a big deal. But he comes up to us being like, hey, man, do you know where I could purchase a firearm? And That's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. At the time, it's like, oh, shit, for one. And I remember his story being like, there's this gang and I need to protect myself and blah, 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 blah. And I need one. And he was kind of mostly not really asking us. He was asking Ash because the, the rumors about Ash had already gone. And I mentioned his fucking name, but it could have been anybody. <laughs> but who knows, dude? He could be fucking anywhere, bro. He could That's be such anywhere. a fake name, though. It could have been. Like, we never knew might, his fucking name. It, it may have. And oh my god, I it, think it works better this thing. way. 
our friend was, doesn't matter. And the other first person was Jacob. Let's just go with that. You know what I mean? These are dictionary. Kevin names. Nash versus Jacob Noble. Yeah, there you and, go. And um, oh my god, dude. I thought I was gonna be the one to say it. That's what happens when you're telling a story. It just fucking comes out like that. You see it what just happens, happens. guys. Yeah. Again, there's a but again, reason. This is this is elementary school, and these are there's... people that don't even exist anymore. Honestly, I mean, possibly. not in our lives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, again, these are alive. people we haven't seen since we were 13 years old. But this we're kid not going to any like 10 year reunion to find out who well, he is wouldn't or even isn't. be invited to the 10 year reunion because he didn't make it to the fucking 10 year. Not at not at our prison. <laughs> but that's I think it's true. easier with these names. I think it's easier for people to kind of get the story because I feel like it is jumbling to be like this person, that's... that's this person, that person, that's that person. So this person that you know, had the fucking rumor going around the school, he was obviously Kevin getting Nash. Into, Kevin Nash was getting into a shit ton of trouble. Yada yada yada. This said individual oh, comes up, asks for a firearm. We're like, whatever, mm-hmm. casual as this is. Jacob, no. <laughs> we didn't even say that <laughs> we didn't tell no no we just stood there like what the fuck so and yeah yeah now being the guy that he was was kind of like he knew that his days were numbered already at this point he was smart enough to know like i'm not going to be here anyways so like, i mean any normal uh normal 16 year old should think yeah well like, he, wasn't I mean, even, he wasn't even 16 bro he was 14 years old what any normal 14 year old <laughs> this, is, this is a freshman Holy year. Shit, that's yeah, awful. This is freshman that's year. Awful to think. Bro, yeah. We're we're kids. We're literally teenage kids. We're very Is that like oh oh nine? Oh ten like in the borderline of 08 and 09. In the border of those two. It's our first year this in high school. Horrible, this is a horrible story, guys. It we really want you is. To know that. We want you to know what we went through. Yeah. And how we somehow made it out to the other side. Yeah, that we're still confused about. So like we don't know if it's really like the other side or not, or it's just like a weird purgatory. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. I think that's no. what, like I think that's what, like our late twenties are. Our late twenties, which is that weird, just a weird time frame where like every three months they're like, you got to stay indoors. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> every now and then you just mention here and there, but um, yeah. so he realized, yo, man, I could play this kid. I could, I could do something here because what's his name? Yeah. And I'll leave it at Jacob. what his name yeah, was asking for, Jacob. was was offering um, cash for, for this. He was, offer, he was offering a substantial amount of money. Which was insane for somebody at that age to have at that point, which a lot of us were. That, I think that confused us more so than anything else. That was the more like, like what the fuck, yeah. where did you get this? Um, and who knows what the we fuck saw, he was up to. We saw the money. Yeah. True story, guys. We saw the amount of money that uh, fake name, guys, Jacob. Yeah. was offering to buy yeah this this said object and uh, uh maybe maybe he was 15 maybe he was older i i doesn't couldn't really, doesn't I couldn't, really matter doesn't really yeah and at the end of the day um they they made My a God. meeting they planned this out and at the end of the yeah. day what he had told us kevin nash was that he was going to do this and that so we knew what the plan was i, I think that's why probably we weren't that concerned because we knew there was no way that this kid was gonna why did we him. know i mean at the end he of the came day, to why us did we like, know because he came to us as a group to ask us. Yeah, but we weren't a part of it. We weren't, but our our he was. Like, I think because he knew a lot of people didn't want to mess with what's his name. Why did we just, get dragged through so much stupid shit? Well, that was the problem with high school. Again, it was one of those <laughs> things where we were never even fucking involved in that. We just find its way to high us. High school in California, guys. Yeah. So in this fucking in moment, oh nine, the day he actually gets expelled, and he did get expelled. Never uh-huh. to be seen yeah, again. Yeah. I, I shit you. I'm not even bullshit. We never saw this kid again. Oh, never. they plan a meeting. They're like, meet me at this park. They meet at the park. He I shows up on a park. bike with a shoebox. Said person, Jacob, has the money. Said mm-hmm. person, Jacob, gives the money to Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash gives him the box. Box is heavy as shit, according to Jacob. And <laughs> the fastest fucking movement I've ever seen in my life, Kevin Nash takes off on his bike last thing i've ever saw of this kid which was 13 years ago he's out of there gone never saw him dude never heard of him nothing only in mention have we ever heard of him again yep this kid jacob walks with his shoebox puts it down no goes home with it because he was obviously fucking freaking out because what he just fucking purchased he just he just got something and yeah uh, it's, it's that's a heavy box so. substance of money gone no way of getting it back because again we didn't know what this fucking kid existed who he was where he was 
how to contact them, where to meet them. He was just like a, a, somebody that was just there and gone in oh, a quick second. He was like a ghost. He was like Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Mostly, bro. Or at least Mostly. one of the three ghosts that visited him. Yeah. And um, come the next day of school, <laughs> Sir yeah. Jacob shows up. He Sir comes Jacob. to us again thinking yeah. we knew yeah. anything that was happening in any of this moment. We just knew details, but we were not involved whatsoever. He comes to us furious, asking where Kevin Nash is at. Being like, yo, where is he? I oh, talked dude. to him. What the fuck? Went Us being the dicks we are, we're like, well, he got expelled. That's when we find out that our boy what? here literally filled the box with a brick Ooh. and a shit ton of rocks. Gave yeah. the kid the box with the rocks, took the cash, goodbye. And once <laughs> the again, rocks, man. <laughs> the rocks disappeared in plain sight. Never seen again. This kid's out of money and better yet so. We never have to worry about any of that situation because once again, in a moment like that, especially nowadays, you would freak out in that. You would react to that differently. Oh, yeah. It's a situation where you're like, what the fuck is going on? Number one. Number two, what the fuck is this kid going to do with it? Number three, why are we involved? And number four, it's like, holy shit, this is very sketchy and a weird fucking moment in our childhood where I look back at that and I'm just like, holy fuck. We knew some such fucking sketchy people. And for some reason, they always found their way to us. But it just kind of worked out the way it did. Yeah, like, uh, I think my biggest takeaway is always check your fucking purchase, I guess. But, um, man, it's one of my favorite stories. It's a good story. I I, I, I tell you that. I tell you that every chance I get. I tell anybody that ever has heard that story. True story, guys. We swear to God on that one um yeah like what i think that is a good point of back then he had a couple options yeah and he did or didn't do certain ones whichever Mm -hmm. but nowadays something like that happens it's chaos it's tragedy it seems yeah yeah it's then it becomes a fucking just goddamn manhunt shit and it's why again it's one of those things that maybe um, it, it was the time that we were living in i don't know or if it was possibly just us being in a different mindset where we just i guess i don't want to say we didn't take happen, things guys. seriously but we just kind of were like well, it is what it is and i think God, we no, also no. knew a part of us also knew that that kid was going to get played regardless like there was never oh, a, yeah, at some a point. situation where like he was actually going to do it because i remember kevin was like i don't even know how to get one to begin with so I don't know why the fuck he's coming to me being like singling me out to be like, give me this and I'll yes, give you dude. that. And it's profiling. I don't like that. <laughs> it mostly was. It ended up being that. And he got played, dude. He got played at big time. That He lost a nice, significant uh, amount of cash money that cost him dearly. And lost let me tell you, this lot, kid, this kid was living. Cash, yeah. He was yeah, living. He was this kid was living. He again. He was another person that assumed that we had this kid's number or any information, and that was a good thing about this kid. He left without a trace, and it was no like, possible dude, I way. I think I don't think I got my first like flip phone until like another like year. So mm-hmm. I didn't have shit. I don't have nobody. Nobody's number. Yeah, I was phoneless too, and he was never giving it out anyways because he did not. I nobody think he had. Lasted. Nobody had that shit. He only lasted nobody I think four Nokia months at the time. He only lasted like four to three months in that place that we were at as, as our friend. And then he was gone. And it just ended. That was the end of his story in our lives, like completely. And then for this kid, it was just the whole rest of the year. He was just triggered about it. He just thought for some reason he was going to get his my box of rocks. I got my box of rocks and a brick. And for whatever oh, reason. Man. And kids, that means whenever you buy something from a scalper, always look in the box first before you leave. Look to make sure, guys. That's yeah, that's the start of that, that's that's the start. Of the story. That's oh a that's a good God. story though. It's a crazy story. And there's many God, more like that where if story. I if you go down memory trail, what we've been through, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, well, that yeah. fucking happened. And we were just oh, kind yeah. of like in living in the moment. It's kind of crazy to look back at all that shit. And I'm pretty sure there's it's more amazing. that will be said in the very near future. But it's just one of those, those are one of the very first ones guys, that comes to mind. Guys, so much stuff is coming in the near future. It's amazing. So many more horrible stories that happened to us at 15. And, <laughs> about, uh, about four years, except probably the probably last one. Yeah, there are a lot of good times, guys. Yeah. Um, and as that's being said, 
there's a lot of good times and good things going on in pop culture, but not as many as there should be. Yeah, there let's be, be real. Many. More. Let's be real. You and know? that's a nice trans- transition to something even more fucking annoying because I knew uh, that I was go. gonna bring this shit up. Um, look, man, this is where are we go. getting. Hold on, are we yeah. getting into the wild world of wrestling? Yeah, we are. We have to. Okay, it's not, it's, it wasn't this, even guys. something that I wanted to bring up today's podcast. But then... www. <laughs> this shit's about to get real. Yeah, it is. It really is because Let's it's one this. of those things where, um, look, man, uh, for so for the last year because of the pandemic, the Thunderdome, blah 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 blah. Everybody's been like the WWE hasn't been doing that good because of you know everything that's been happening in the world, and they've been using that dome. excuse. It's the dome. It's the it's the no crowd. It's the blah blah blah, and every excuse they can come up with. Um, yeah. We got SummerSlam coming around the corner. We got the first live crowd for WWE in a long time for SmackDown, which is tomorrow. Um, then we got Money in the Bank. And then in August, we get SummerSlam in Vegas. And we all assumed that this was going to be an absolutely stacked SummerSlam. This is going to be like almost on the, the same level of a a la WrestleMania. So a lot of us assumed, spoiler alert, but everybody should assume that this is going to be the, the quiet possibility that Lash is going to beat Kofi Kingston on Sunday and Lash is going to go to SummerSlam as the WWE champion and that we would probably, most likely, get Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. It was safe to assume that, being that Brock has always said he wasn't going to come back till fans were back. And that whole fucking story changed because then Sean Rapp of FIFO reports that that son of a bitch, Bill Goldberg, is making his triumphant return this upcoming Monday. The guy that I have not cared for since probably, I don't know, when did he almost kill Never. Brett? Yeah, we can go with that. Well, too. yeah, if, he's, if he was killing Brett, then I guess we got to care about him. But <laughs> other than that, but, oh. he didn't try to guy. kill Brett. He just gave Brett a stroke. That's yeah, it. that too. And I'm pretty sure he gave it yeah. to others as well. I mean, he's yeah, giving probably. me one every time he wrestles in this this generation. Ooh. But Ooh. um Goldberg, man, being part of SummerSlam, not only being part of SummerSlam, the fact that they're Headline. actually going to give him a title shot versus Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam is one of the stupidest booking decisions I have ever heard. Number one, it makes me again say that the pandemic was not the problem with WWE creative. It was not the excuse for Mr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon and all his fucking doofus decision that he keeps continuing to make throughout his period here of being an old man. Um, the fact that there's nobody here that's like, hey, man, let's, let's just say Bill could even wrestle still. And he can't, obviously. But let's not live enough. in that false reality that Goldberg was still a decent fucking wrestler, which he never has been, never will be. But even in the booking decision, this motherfucker lost to Braun Strowman at the fall, not this last year, but the year before that WrestleMania, loses to Drew McIntyre at the Royal Rumble, and then is then once again granted a title match against a Bobby Lashley who's white hot right now for no fucking reason other than Vince McMahon still thinks that this guy is a live attraction or that anybody really cares to see Goldberg in a wrestling match. Not only a wrestling match, but the main title wrestling match. This guy has not been good for a very long time, he, he's an awful fucking wrestler. If you could even call him one, he, he has no moves yeah. for whatsoever in his pocket. For all the shit that people bring up for like all the old timers and shit, he's easily, easily the worst one still thinking that they can go in that ring. I'd rather see Sting do a bunch of matches still left in his career without getting hurt, hopefully, hopefully, without Seth Rollins trying to kill him. But Instead of seeing Goldberg try to wrestle one more time, this guy is past his prime. He's not a good wrestler. There's no reason to have him on a SummerSlam pay-per-view going against somebody like Bobby Lashley. There's nothing there left in the tank. And the fact that nobody is there telling Vince, fuck no, we don't want this guy here. Number one, nobody cares to see him. He's not, for all the shit that Brock Lesnar gets, even this Brock Lesnar. Far worse. (laughs) Even this Brock Lesnar at this fucking age, dude. And his whole fucking career, an actual fucking wrestler, an actual athlete. It's not a fucking steroid. Obviously, he does steroids, but he's not just a steroid using guy that's just big as shit like Bill. Fucking Brock actually knows how to fucking do some shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's a total difference yeah. night and day. And it's like to be like that and to the first Monday Night Raw and first in front of a live crowd, your response to that is, oh, man, wait for this big surprise. 
here comes Bill. God. And we're going to put him right back in the main event title picture once again. Why? Because he's still in the traction. He's not. He's really not. not and, and especially no. with a roster where you have a, a plentiful. If Brock wasn't available, and I don't blame him, Brock's probably like, yo, man, I'm chilling in Canada. You know, I'm still yeah, unstable. I'm, I'm hunting. I'm cutting up meat. I got my fucking ponytail going. I'm chilling. Why would I want to come back? I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to face Lashley, and who can blame him? I can understand his point of view. What has Brock Lesnar not been able to do in his career? Maybe he's fucking done. Maybe he just wants to chill. But your response to that is like, fine, we'll just book Goldberg in 2021 to face a Bobby Lashley in the middle of the ring. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. It's an awful fucking decision. They're doing what so many people think other companies are doing, where it's like, that's where you fuck up. You don't make new stars. When Vince McMahon cannot make a new star. He doesn't know how to make a new star. Either they have to do it themselves. He doesn't know how to tie his own shoes, guys. Probably not. He's you know, he's useless. He's useless as shit. And I don't know why Hunter doesn't just fucking take him out of his misery and fucking go on and be, be the head honcho over there. Buy some men that shit, dude. Just get over it. It's, it's a fucking awful rabbits. decision. It's a dumb fucking decision. It's one of those things where it's like Goldberg should not be stepping in the ring with anybody, let alone your champion. No let alone anybody on your roster that you currently use on a daily fucking basis. People that have been there during the pandemic every fucking week for your shitty ass booked shows where you're hiring guys from ridiculousness from MTV to be one of your head writers and WWE yeah. creative. Good on, none of good those on motherfuckers. Them. Yeah, none of those motherfuckers should ever be writing anything for Goldberg to be featured on a main event scene. It's fucking horrendous. It's stupid. And that's what makes it think, man, even with the fans back, I don't think much is going to change. I really don't. I don't think no. anything is really going to change from the raw standpoint. And we'll even get into SmackDown. Like, yeah, Roman Reigns is killing it. That's about it. And that's the threshold. It's just yeah. Roman edge. And it's like, what else do you have to offer? Fucking Drew is doing this whole bullshit sword thing, trying to become like this new fucking Hogan for whatever fucking reason. And it's just not working whatsoever. Everything else is dog shit. Uh-oh. And now you're telling me a three-hour Raw is going to feature Goldberg for the next four weeks till SummerSlam? I'm good. Bring the fans back all you want. I, that's not what I want to watch on my TV. Uh, not at all. I mean, it makes no sense. Um, it makes zero fucking sense. Mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't get it. I don't get it in general, but I definitely don't get it right now. Yeah. Um, and as someone that doesn't even watch the fucking product, uh, still, why the fuck would that be the one that gets me? Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't, and it won't, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck about the outcome. I probably know the outcome, and that sounds shitty. I, they can't have them win. That would be literally the biggest slap in the face to their fans. I mean, even though they don't give a fuck about I their mean, fans, and they blame their fans for everything that's gone wrong for them the last few years, Still doesn't make it right to have him ever pin anybody active. Exactly. Yeah. I, I I don't get I I don't know I from a like absolutely like logical standpoint I don't mm. fucking understand why bringing him in seems like a good idea. I don't it's, get it. It sounds like one of those things where they're just like, yo, we couldn't get Brock, and let's just double yeah. down. And get somebody that's available because obviously Edge is doing his whole thing with Roman, and then he's probably going to work with Seth and John doing this thing with Roman next. Um, and I guess they didn't just see, and that's not Lashley's fault. I mean, it's like build somebody on the Raw side to actually look like a legitimate challenger to Lashley, not just somebody that hasn't been featured, who's coming off of two losses in a row. If you want to keep it like in in that realm of like who's deserving, who's not. And just spearhead them, no pun intended, into a goddamn uh, yeah. title match with Bobby Washington. Because there's nothing about that that there, there's nothing in there that even makes it look good. You know, in what realm does this Goldberg and Bobby Washington ever look good on paper? Fucking never, never. Yeah. Why would I? Why would I even joke about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's just there, there's no realm where that fucking works. We're like it's just it's it's awful. I feel bad for Lashley to begin with. Um, should have just kept going with the whole Kofi Lashley thing. I'd rather just see them continuing that storyline. Or, I mean, screw it, dude. Even if, like, they kind of tease the whole MVP breakup, I'll just have Lashley face MVP for the title. I don't really give a rat. So I'd rather see MVP wrestle dude, yeah. than, than Goldberg at this point. I'd rather see Carlito come oh, back absolutely. and wrestle Lashley. I don't care who it is. It's somebody. Anybody. Anybody. 
Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you look at NXT, and I don't want to lose anybody from NXT. But for a one-off, because this is what Goldberg is, Goldberg is the one-off anyways, why not just call somebody up? Give a kid on NXT a chance to make themselves a star. Have any of the plethora of cross. I can't stand Cross. I think Cross is one of the most overrated fucking wrestlers in the business today. But I'd oh, much God. rather uh, see Cross challenge Lashley than see Goldberg do it. Making yeah, you star, Vince. I, he's like, I don't know what the word new means. I know old, overused, no talent. same shit. Fucking same know. booking. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the word burrito, but. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those things, bro. It's like, does this motherfucker really think like it's 98 or even 2003 to just be like, let's keep on propping this dude out there? He probably doesn't know what year it is. Yeah, he probably doesn't. And it's one of those things where I saw a lot of people give him like credit because he tweeted for like the first time in a long time. We tweeted a video, which probably wasn't even him tweeting. It was just probably some fucking kid that he has working for him. him. Look at how good he is using the iPad. It's like, congratulations, WWE is back. It's like, yeah, congratulations. They're just going to shit all over your fucking hopes and dreams. And now you have to go through a three-hour Raw, probably continuing the whole Drew Jinder fucking sword fight thing they got going on. Yeah, and then you got fun. Goldberg promos coming up soon, which I'm just like, that's going to be lovely. I can't wait to hear CTE Goldberg try to drop a promo about how he deserves the title. That's always lovely. It's like, why don't you break your head again on the door? It's like, that, that's, that yeah. to me it would be much watch TV than actually seeing yeah. you in the ring. Just Bring dumb booking, home, man. Stupid decisions by stupid Bad. creative team, man. Bad booking, dude. I think that's that leaves the bad taste in our mouth for wrestling. Well, fuck it. I mean, in better news, I think we could fucking announce this because it's already been announced plenty of times. Fucking GCF, y'all know about them. Work for them. We've um, worked for them for a long, long fucking time. It was announced earlier oh, tonight. Yeah. But GCF is making that triumphant return September 18th. Also, this Sunday, this very Sunday live on the gcf youtube channel which you can find the link down below in the description if you're listening to us on spotify um the youtube channel is called gold coast federation official we will be doing a live reaction to money in the bank where we will also give out more information for the next upcoming gcf show which is going to be on september 18th which we're very excited for but yeah if you want to see our reaction to money in the bank Head on down to the Gold Coast Federation YouTube good. channel. Yeah, come hang Gotta out with be. us. Yeah, we're all going to be chilling Gotta there. Be. Probably uh, as as shasted as we are now, just fucking talking about wrestling and just moaning and just bitching about whatever bullshit they've tried to parade on the TV. I mean, it is what it is. Oh, I yeah. have to fucking download Peacock now because there's no fucking network anymore. It's also nice. Oh, God. Yeah, have you done that shit? Is it like, is it still free when you get the fucking subscription or do you have to like get the subscription then pay for the damn fucking paper? No, you, no, 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 it's, it's free. Okay. It's like, it's on like, and like, so you go on Peacock and they have a WWE app or like mm. a WWE like side tap bullshit. Yeah. And then you just find whatever. Just click away. It's like Other than the stuff that they advertise for like a month straight. And then they're like, nope, never mind, It's not on there. Second, like, the it's fuck? like fuck that. It's like you want five seasons for free of The Office. Here you go. I was, yeah, <laughs> I was kind of hoping to see what Nash and Stone Cold would talk about, but they're like, oh, they never aired that. Never aired it. Never. Aired Where the that. fuck was it promoted all week? Never aired that. Never aired a uh, Lex Luger like bio. I can understand that. Uh, they they've still been <laughs> yeah they still been advertising a uh, a Nexus like special behind the scenes yeah special mm. where i'm like that'd be cool but it hasn't shown up yet how they fucked so, that up is that in that story like where they're yeah, like probably, oh, we ruin yeah. nexus we walk alone we ruin <laughs> stories you're like yeah probably man well so that's what probably the it took out going. the fucking kevin nash things they're like how did we ruin the nwo coming to wwf like there has to be a reason fucking kevin probably said something like oh this is how yeah well i mean well like what like when the nwo first showed up in wrf yeah when they did the whole I mean, no way out i mean fucking... hall hall ruined it by being a drunk that was fun though that's how, that's how he got fired <laughs> but yeah it was fun oh my god see it that was. wrestlemania was... 17 he sold his ass off that entire stone cold match oh like, yeah people remember it for so being it bad great. i always look back at it being like well yeah but it gave you like the most fucking at the time it like the great. most iconic match of all time between what did you want 
I get Seriously. it. Yeah. You know? It's like, like, but yeah, it's like in my head, it's like, why wouldn't you air that? Like, people. what, what bad thing could have Kevin said in that, that fucking podcast yeah. that was any different to like what Jericho I, said about, you know, I haven't heard bullshit. any, any reasons or anything. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there's a reasoning. That deal to this day is still so stupid to me. Everybody that was like, oh man, Vince made another billion. It's like, yeah, that's cool. He just released like another like 10 wrestlers while he was at it. Because budget yeah. cuts. Budget cuts, pal. We don't have enough money to to keep all the guys that we've been hoarding for the last 10 years. It's uh, one of those things I'll never understand. Yeah, man. Uh, man. Fucking Vince. I don't... Uh, and yeah, people yell at me when I talk shit on the man. Fuck you, people. <laughs> Vince McMahon deserves a lot of shit talking. But that being said, um, mm. that that concludes our wrestling uh, fuck you to wrestling itself. Because it's an awful thing, guys. It really is really bad. And... I mean, fuck it. Yeah. You look at poor-ass Darby last night. Do you think Darby's going to last? Yeah. Like in wrestling? Or like in like life. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna stick with wrestling for now. Um, I mean, like, do you th- are you saying like you think he's gonna get like fucking crippled? The amount of or... bumps that kid takes are like fucking yeah insane. It's like it gets a little bit too much. Like, obviously, I want to see him do the crazy shit. And he's obviously a talented dude, and um, he's obviously has the potential to be like the future of wrestling. Him and MGF and like Ricky Starks and guys like that have like insane amount of potential to be monster stars in this business but at the same time it's like the amount of bumps that he takes compared to everybody else that seems like a short-term career more so than a long-term one as unfortunate no, as that might that. be um yeah no i can absolutely see it from that especially going from like the start of the uh, uh page like feud in aw mm. when he tossed him down the stairs i yeah. was just like Man, I can watch deathmatch stuff all day long, mm. but it's somehow seeing people use light tubes is still a little bit better than seeing someone actually tumble down a fucking staircase. Yeah, because I'm like, bro, you can mess that up so many different ways, and that's not good, like in any way, obviously. But I, uh, I don't know, like. It- it's scary dude it's one of those things where it's like this kid has a lot of fucking talent and it's one of those things where i've always said for wrestlers when they go down that path of doing that it's like that's going to be your gimmick and how much longer do you want that to be your gimmicks that's what people are going to expect now every time you go out there yeah and that's a hard fucking transition to go from that to being like i just want to wrestle and it's like yeah but now they're expecting that that was like the one thing with mick which just being like mick fall was crazy talented guy but then people just expected them to like fall off the cage and I can fall into thumbtacks, fucking rip his ear off, do shit crazy like that, because that just became the standard for him. That's my thing with Darby. It's like you don't want that to be his standard. That's as fortunate as that might be, because the kid could fucking go. Oh yeah. Like he has all the talent in the world, but yeah. I absolutely get what you mean, where he, he's one bad kind of move away from yeah, definitely getting actually hurt. So. Yeah. And he's going to be in you the know. new Jackass movie, too, which I'm just like, like, God damn, bro. Yeah. But I don't know. Um, yeah. And the way wrestling is nowadays, too, where it's very just, you know, transfers over to the, you know, music and movies and different mm. culture. Um, I don't know. It's very strange. Like, yeah. like we said, a tremendous talent but goddamn kid maybe slow down a bit like just like yeah a little a little bit that's it. just a tad bit good match though fucking aw killed it last yeah. night but um oh, great yeah yeah fucking i think they said today that they beat the demographic for raw which i'm like holy shit that's kind of fucking nuts that's a weird thing to fucking know that a company show that's been on for over almost 30 some years is starting to lose ground to a show that's only been around for two it's time either a sign of the times or a sign of people just being in bad creative decisions moving forward but that's a nice transition into a little show called loki that introduced the newest villain 
of the MCU. One of those things where we all yep. thought, man, like they're not going to do it. Um, I, I think it was the last podcast where Rossi like mentioned the quote that came from, I believe, like either the way it was the director or the writer. I can't remember which one, but it was one of the two. Yeah, yeah. they just said that you're either going to be very happy or very disappointed. Um, knowing what we know now, where are you at? Um, I was happy. I was, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of cool things I, I really dug from it. Um, I guess if anything, it could have led a little bit more to what the actual next step is Mm -hmm. other than just obviously spoiler, but like next season of Loki. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole show or the whole season. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see. I, I stand by what I was usually saying before was if Loki doesn't show up in any more movies but has a television show, I'll be okay with that. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a good fit for him. He doesn't have to be in the movies, mm-hmm. but he can have this. So yeah. we'll see how far they go with it. But yeah, I, I, I dug it. I was happy. So it was cool. And it still brings up more questions of, obviously the multiverse and everything so it seems yeah. like it's progressing yeah they opened you pandora's know? box with this last episode obviously we're getting we're getting king to conquer spoilers as we mentioned yeah. um but yeah man that's that's one where it's like i like how they didn't completely show king just yet you know what i mean they gave you the variant yeah he teased what was coming but they didn't give you it for just the loki series they kind of just said like here's just a taste of what's to come um but you have to make the decision you see the timeline cracking open. Obviously, that means way more for um, the next Doctor Strange movie and the next Spider-Man movie because obviously that's going to open that that whole fucking door. That makes every scenario that was teased or the plot leaks for Spider-Man, that makes all of those reality almost that we're almost guaranteed to see William Defoe's you know, Green Goblin. And you might be there for a longer time than we saw in the first Spider-Man movie. And we might, we're almost guaranteed to see a world where there's Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and maybe even different incarnations of these characters that we have yet to see in other universes because they haven't really teased it. Um, But they opened that door. They really went for it. I like the way that they teased it. I like the way they set that up. I like the fact that Loki, you know, he goes to Owen Wilson's character and Owen Wilson doesn't even know who he is now. Because then you're like, that's that now that actually has long lasting impact moving forward you see the king the conqueror statue instead of seeing those three that they had originally when the show started um it's just it's a crazy time man i think that that has that's the next phase and i tweeted this i'm like man it's gonna be a bitch to get through saint chi and eternals because i just want to get to spider-man and then then dr strange you know into the the madness and the, the multiverse because that to me is more appealing at this point, Saint Chi looks appealing just because of Abomination, all the shit they're doing there. Mandarin talked about it so many times how finally the Mandarin's mm-hmm. gonna get justice. Internals is the one where I'm just like, I, I still have not found any redeeming quality from it to make me be like, I want to see that movie. Other than the cast, I guess yeah. like, that's that's the one movie where I'm just like, man, kind of. Let's just fast forward the shit. That's about yeah, it. yeah, it feels like a, a stop just in the wrong direction where i'm just like i want to go this way because this is what fucking loki already teased let's keep it going internals feels like more of like a history lesson where i don't i don't need yeah to see you history lesson no like honestly it's just one yeah. of those should have come out if it was ever going to come out and it really didn't have to come out yeah you know so easily i had no funny, had no use of coming up whatsoever but yeah king the conqueror man could be should be the next big MCU villain taking over after the um, the Thanos stuff. And my question is, dude, what if there's a fucking Thanos variant? It's an option. Excuse me. No, you're good, bro. Um, no, that's a very good question because it's like they could definitely kind of build from that idea already. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they will. Mm-hmm. I didn't, honestly didn't think about them really going for it, but they might. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that opens up even Hugh Jackman's Wolverine possibly entering. I mean, who the fuck knows? Yeah, it opened that fucking we're getting, door. We're they're getting crazy with it now, but yeah, if he, if I, like Kevin Feige got so fucking stoned probably during the pandemic. He's just like, oh, absolutely, all this He's shit. He's like, I got this. 
<laughs> like, 30, 30 years worth of this shit. It's like, yeah. I'm going to show Scorsese, man, that these fucking movies are classics and up to par with Goodfellas and every fucking movie he's ever written. It's like, Fuck well, that asshole. <laughs> that cinematic. Only... Cinematic piece of shit. <laughs> fucking Feige just turned tail and shit. Whoa, um, Kevin. And let's end it with fucking Fear Street because that's the fucking thing that everybody's talking about. Fucking Fear Street, oh, man. man. Watched it last night because you recommended it to me because you're like, this shit has I some did. good kills. Yeah. And I checked it I out did, last night. Man. The kills, awesome. Fucking loved it, man. It had a lot of homages to classic good horror stuff. stuff. Um, obviously, yeah. Scream, Friday the 13th. What was, fa- what was your favorite kill of the entire thing? If you can remember it had to be that i don't know what was it it was like a bread thing that we just pushed that the girls mine. yeah pushed her head like through it bread cutter yeah it's, it's one good. of those moments where you're like they're not actually gonna go for it fucking went for it and i'm like cool i'm like fucking more movies should do this they should go all out for good. the gore yeah oh and yeah good shit um acting fucking trash but that's that's not even on them it's just the more of a netflix problem where they're just cheap which is, I think that's going to be like their downfall at some point because you see other companies, obviously, like oh, yeah. Max, Disney Plus being like splurge, fucking get the A list celebrities and put them in these fucking movies or shows or whatever the case may be. That's what Chris always... Pratt doing this weekend. Fucking They're like, um, I guess he's working for Amazon Prime right now. I don't know. He's remaking War of the Worlds, but it's not War of the Worlds and it's on some fucking platform. It's, it's, it's not War of the Worlds or Independence Day, but it's something. And you're like, uh, just, I won't watch it. <laughs> it's like it's trying to be Tom Cruise and Will Smith and all this at the same time. It's just like, not uh, really oh. selling it. But um, Netflix has just always been the type, bro. That's just like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to. I don't want to spend money on a cast. Um, it worked for them. I said earlier, like Stranger Things, doesn't mean it's always gonna yeah. fucking work for them. And it hasn't worked for them. And they continue to do this. But again, if you're just looking for a fun slasher horror classic type of thing that pays homage to the older versions of slasher films it did it for me um it's watchable just for the kills and for all that shit best one of the second my second priority kill is the beginning when he does the old school slow-mo scream kill stabs the girl in the back very reminiscent of the drew barrymore scene in the very first scream so i dug it i dug some of the shots they had in that in this film or whatever it's called i think it's like an anthology or whatever yeah I, I, yeah pretty much just weird old fucking rl stein man which is it's already weird in itself i'm like yeah man, we read Obviously, I'm sure you did it just the same. And we were reading Goosebumps when we were children. Yeah. Like, back to back, just different shit. Do you remember what your favorite? But not your favorite. What was the scariest Goosebumps book? Oh, well, the, well, the, I don't say? know why. I'm, I've never been scared of, like, toys. But the puppet one was always fucking scary to me. Oh, Slappy? Yeah, dude. I, and I've never, like, Chucky oh, and Annabelle and all them never cared. But the puppet one was fucking creepy shit, dude. Like, it always got you me. Know, you know which one got me? Which one? It was, it was uh, I remember it. I remember the title and I remember the fucking front cover of it, man. It was called <laughs> Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. And it was just like hands like cut off playing <laughs> piano. It was fucking weird, bro. That's what we'll do on the next podcast. We'll just need <laughs> goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs> just give us our bumps. reviews. Oh, we'll shit. get those ones we'll get those ones where it was like you choose your like destiny shit mm. remember that one yeah those are weird too and then you just make you feel like a piece of shit when you like end up dying you're like oh fuck go back it was never fucking worth it like that dude worth some i remember just being weird books like more so than like crazy or like scary it was just more oh, yeah. so just being weird this is weird stuff it's a weird guy just sitting in his fucking basement writing stories yeah, I just found kids, the, I, I just googled the other one, the one where they're having the barbecue and it's just skeletons. I always thought that was like a cool like design. Oh, which what was what was the name of that? It's like say cheese, cheese and die. Yeah. That's fucking gold, man. One picture is worth a thousand screams is like the caption for like the picture, but I'm like, it's a fucking dope ass like cover for like a that, book. That was good, man. Which that's I never they understood. Had, like these had... books were fucking decent, but then they turned it into like a cartoon fucking series of Jack Black, and it's just like, yeah, oh, okay. It's like it's for kids. It's like it didn't have to be though. No, like they could have, they could have done like a redo of the show and made it like actual decently, or they could have done another, or just a movie, I guess. But like, there, is, there you go. There's Zack Snyder's next project. Pretty much, man. Why not? And I was <laughs> like, uh, why not go? Did you hear they tried to make Rick and Morty the live action? 
Who, Zack Snyder? Yeah. Fucking why? Because yeah, Zack Snyder. <laughs> Oh my god! And what's even worse is I think the the creator was like, yeah, that would be interesting. And I'm like, would it though? Would it be interesting to get Rick and Morty live action? Why would you want it? Why would you want to do that? Why would anybody do any of those things? How can you even make that live? Like, yeah, isn't it just yeah, a, no, a rip off of Back to the Future? Technically, like anyways, like it absolutely it just, is. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's like, just a weird. It's just a weirder Back to the Future, and I'm gonna back make on the future think NASA. you're gonna. Back to the Future is already a weird script alone. If you yeah. sit and think about it from like longer than you should, so now Rick and Morty live action, it's really gonna make you be like, "Oh, I feel dirty for watching Back to the Future," <laughs> especially when it's like Zack Snyder fucking directed, written, yeah, produced, so it's just all dark and shit, and just like very just gloomy. It's like in Seattle for some reason. Like, Henry Cavill was Morty. <laughs> okay. <you're> like, <laughs> Jeremy Iron. <laughs> uh, you know what? That might not be bad with that accent. Like, kill it. Fucking You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> shit, Matt Damon is the fucking dad or some shit. All right, man. Again, oh, dude. this is a spontaneous oh, fucking episode, which I'll probably have more so fucking moving forward. There may not ever always be a fucking plan or per se. Um, there'll always be one of those things like where that. we just, yeah, there'll be more like, episodes like this where we just fucking ramble on with no real direction because those are usually the funnest ones those are usually the ones where i laugh because those are the ones i probably have to edit like this one um <laughs> uh, that's but the those, most fun that was the most fun yeah when i look back at it i'm like you know, but that's always fun i like those but um man we got more shit coming up i think you know i always say this but we're probably going to start dabbling into having some guests show up onto this pod that we can interview talk to let them know um pick their brains about certain subjects um we know a lot of horror fans that i know would love to be on here to discuss more horror stuff so we're gonna dabble into that um we might very soon be having a, a whole live in-person podcast that might be happening very soon more information on that coming fun. soon yeah it's gonna be real yeah. fun that one's gonna have a, a lot of special guests that's almost guaranteed um but yeah ladies yep. and gentlemen like always subscribe down below if you're listening to us on spotify if you're downloading us like you guys are every single day i thank you as always for listening to us on youtube watching us um on there the video form thank you as well um fucking let's close it one more time very quickly what do you think of the time straight with i know we want to talk oh about oh my god so, so good yeah I, it right. can't be august sooner yeah that's seriously. the most that's the most anticipated thing i am comic book related coming out in the next like year definitely yeah that shit and, Looks good. and we'll be back to talk about that for sure but oh yeah, when the fucking shit drops that's gonna be stuff we have yes. to like do reoccurring like reviews for like how they pulled that shit off i'm interested man I, oh, yeah. uh fucking batman retiring i don't know i always hate when they do that but we'll see how they pull that shit off especially if nightwings being like the fucking batman of gotham fuck it i'm down for it all right sure. ladies and gentlemen we will see you guys very very soon two uploads this week Many more coming your way in the very near future. You guys have a lovely night. See you guys later on.